Hey guys, welcome to this Unity Camera Follow Player tutorial where we're going to be building a simple Unity project where our camera will be following our player within our game. So just to give you an idea of what we're going to be building in this project, we're going to be creating a basic player with some player movement as well as a camera follow script which is going to allow our camera to follow our player around the screen as well as have bounding boxes so our camera does not go off screen when our player moves towards uh, the end of our map as well as we're going to just look at a very basic way of as also doing a camera follow script or a camera follow uh, technique that we can use to just get some camera following going without any scripting so guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do subscribe now, hit that notification bell so that you can get notifications of any new tutorials and devlogs in future. So let's jump straight into this tutorial. So I've just created a very basic Unity Camera Follow Player project. It's just a Unity 2D project. So as you can see, it is basically a blank new project i've just got this uh, background image and i'm bringing over a player movement script which i used before just to get our player movement so just to very quickly go over this it's just some very basic scripting doing rigid bodies zeroing out of velocity and doing movement based on arrow keys so very first thing i'm going to do just to get this going is i'm going to bring in our background and i'm going to go ahead and create a basic player so I'm going to right click in assets, I'm going to go to create, I'm going to go to sprite and I'm going to go to square. I'm going to call this player and I'm just going to drop this into our scene. So we've got our player. We just want to now just position this so that our player is visible in our scene. So let's go over to our main camera to see that our player is there. Next thing we want to do in our player, we want to add a component and we want to add a rigid body 2D. We're simply going to change this to kinematic and then we're going to drop our player script onto there. So if we hit play, we're going to have a player that can move. So as you see, there's no camera follow at the moment. So let's look at the most basic way you could actually do camera follow in Unity 2D. So very simply, you could just go ahead and child your main camera to your player. So you'll see now it actually follows your player around. But if we get to the end of the screen, you'll see we are starting to see the end of our background and we don't want to see that. So what we need to do in order to get to the point where we have a bounding box as well, we need to change our camera movement and our camera follow movement to a script and not parent it like this. So I'm going to stop this and I'm going to unparent our main camera. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new C sharp script and I'm going to call this camera follow. So immediately what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and add this to our main camera and then I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio. Right, so here we've got Visual Studio. So the very first thing we want to do, just to get a very basic script going, is to have that follow working. I'm going to get rid of the start method for now, and we are going to be using the fixed update method. We're going to have a few variables here. So the thing is, we need a public transform transform variable. And this will call follow transform. So whatever we attach to this transform, our camera will follow. So very simply, what we'll do here in our fixed update method, we will go ahead and change the position of our camera based on our follow transform. So to do that, I'm just going to use this transform.position. And I'm going to set that to a new vector 3. So now remember we are playing in 2D space. So we don't want to move our 
camera on the Z position. So we want to use our current position in the world. So what we'll do is we will go ahead and take our follow transform dot position dot X. So X is fine. Follow transform dot Y uh, position dot Y there. And then we simply want to use our this dot transform dot position dot Z or Z to leave our camera in the Z position. Save that off, go back into Unity, hit play. And let's see if our camera moves. So it does not. So let's just make sure we've got our follow transform attached here. And that's why it's not following. So let's go and drag our player in here to get our player transform. Hit play again. And now we should have that player movement and our camera moving with our player movement. So still there is an issue where it's going off screen. So let's now implement a way of clamping down our camera's view so that it doesn't go off screen. So the very first thing we need to do is we somehow need to define the size of our map. And to do this, we are going to go over to our background and add a component. And we're going to add a box collider 2D to that component. So as you can see, our bounding box and our collider is right around our map. So now what we want to do is we want to head back over to C Sharp and Visual Studio so that we can actually go and change our camera follow script. So some things we need to implement is we need to get away of, well, use some methods to get the bounds of our map. So we need to declare a few variables here. So the first one is going to be a public box collider 2D. And that's our, we're gonna call this map bounds because we'll be dropping our map or our background into this. Then we need a few variables for our min values and max values. So I'm gonna declare a float of x min, x max, y min, and y max. Then what we next want to do is we need to have a camera y and camera x position. So let's go and declare that as a float. Cam x, cam y. We also need to get the orthographic size of our camera. So that's basically the field of view, how large our camera's field of view is. So we'll go and declare another private float and we'll call this cam auth size. And we also need a camera ratio, which we are going to use on our horizontal axis. So I'll show you what the difference is and why that won't work with cam auth size. But for now, let's just declare these variables. And then finally, we need a camera variable for our main camera. So we'll just call that main cam. And then let's now go and recreate our start method so that we can just set these variables. So x min is going to equal to our map bounds dot bounds dot min dot x. Our x max is going to be map bounds dot bounds dot max dot x. So very simple at this point y min equals map bounds dot bounds dot min dot y just copy this speed this up a little bit max and max next thing we want to do is initialize our main camera so we'll get component camera and do that then simply we need to get our cam off size, which we will get from our camera. So we'll call main cam dot orthographic size. We need to get our camera ratio. So how we do that is we will take our camera ratio 
and we'll make that equal to our x maximum so that's the full length of our maps view we'll add the cam off size and then we will simply divide that by 2.0 float so this 2.0 float is very important so that we don't lose precision in this calculation so make sure to add that otherwise this won't work now simply we need to go ahead and just clamp our camera down so that it doesn't go off screen when we do approach the end of our map so simply put we're going to set our cam y variable and we are going to set our cam x variable so we'll use the math f dot clamp function or method depending on which world you come from then we are going to use our follow transform as our baseline position dot y we are going to take our y min and we're going to add our cam off size so this cam all size essentially is going to equal half the size of the orthographic mode of our camera so as you can see from this description it says here cameras half size when in orthographic mode so that allows us to get the center point of our camera's view so that's why we're going to be adding it to our y min so that we always offset our camera's position by half. Then we're going to clamp between Y min and Y max. And we, here we're going to be subtracting our cam off size. So for our cam X, I'm going to just to demonstrate why we actually do need this calculation here. I'm going to drop this in here and I'm going to use X x and x to do our clamping then simply we now need to just pass in our camera positions so we're going to replace this with cam x and cam y let's save that off and let's run this project let's just first make sure we have added everything to our camera follow script so we need to go and go ahead and add our background and that's going to take our box collider 2d from our background to get our bounds so let's play this so you'll see we still have a follow and when we start to approach the end of the map the camera stops following the player so the big issue on the x-axis now is when we move across to the left here we'll see that it doesn't quite check out and that's because of the actual aspect ratio of this so the off size is basically going downwards or vertically and not horizontally so we have to do a calculation based on the bounding box on the x-axis so that calculation of our camera ratio needs to come into play now so what we'll do is we'll go back into visual studio and this time we'll use our camera ratio on our x coordinates save that off go back into unity hit play and you'll see that it's now going to stop following when it hits that border so there is a bit of an offset here which we just need to go and just offset with a bit of margin so we can add and subtract a float variable just to offset those margins but in general this calculation is pretty close to correct so let's now look at something else which is quite important especially if you are going to be doing this with uh, platformer games in unity 2d you might want to have some smoothing on your camera so in order to just implement something very simple like that we need to use a math.lerp function or a vector3.lerp function in unity so we'll just head back into our c -sharp script and we are going to add two new variables so one of which is a private vector3 
for three and we're just going to call this smooth pause for position and we are just going to create a public float smooth speed so this is the rate at which it is going to be smoothing our camera movement so when you do like a jump in a platform and you want it to smoothly move up smoothly move down when the player moves down because it is it's not a fixed movement it is a linear or exponential movement we definitely want to smooth that out so how we're going to apply the smoothing is quite simple after our cam x over here we're going to set our smooth position and our smooth position is going to be a vector 3 dot lerp and we're going to be lerping from our current position so it's this transform position to our new vector 3 position so that's going to be this position down here where we want our camera to be going towards so add that in there and then we'll just simply pass in our smooth speed and pass in our smooth position Save that off we can run this in unity but we won't really see a difference because we have a linear movement uh, so there's an error here let's just quickly check why so there's a float so we just have to put in the f there to fix that so we can run this but we won't see any difference with the smoothing because we don't have that jumpy movement you can see a slight little diversion when I like move the player around that it does a little bit of a bouncy effect and that's because of the smoothing. So if you are doing this for a platformer it will work just perfectly fine. It will allow it to smooth up and down depending on the player's up and down movement. So guys basically um, that's the end of this tutorial. We covered a few things here where we can keep our camera inside of the bounds of our map we can move our player around have our player followed by the camera as well as do some smoothing on our camera movement as well so guys if you like this video please hit like below subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell i am going to be releasing more videos so please do that so that you can get notifications for my new videos thanks guys for watching see you in the next one Cheers.